has followed him is not being caught up with him. So we have a waiting disciple. Then we have a descending power. For as Elijah went up and Elisha saw him no more, what he did see was the mantle that fell from Elijah and he picked it up. But before he could put on the mantle of Elijah, he had to put off his own mantle. There are things, my friends, that we need to recognize in this story. Because in the New Testament, we have an ascending master, the Lord Jesus Christ being caught up on the clouds of heaven. We have waiting disciples, just the same as Elisha was waiting. And then on the day of Pentecost, we have a descending power. And even as Elisha smote the waters and they parted hither and thither on the day of Pentecost, as that mantle of Christ fell upon his disciples, we have them going forth uh, to preach the word of God with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. And we have uh, the demonstration of power, the same things that Jesus did, the disciples did, the same as Elisha had done what Elijah had done. An ascending master a waiting disciple, a descending power. My friends in Christ, uh, there is graduation in the things of God. There is graduation in the things of God. In a world of instant everything, uh, we need to realize uh, that we have got to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we have to learn how to be men and women of God. We have to learn how to pray as we ought to pray. We have to learn how to preach as we ought to preach. We have to learn how to forgive as we ought to forgive. We have to learn how to love as we ought to love. We have to learn how to sacrifice as we ought to sacrifice. These things do not come to us overnight. We have to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ until we come to the place where we can honestly say without fear of contradiction I am crucified with Christ I am dead uh, nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me when Elisha threw off his own mantle to pick up the mantle of Elijah he was in effect saying uh, that that which was his he was no longer dependent upon uh, he was taking on a new garment uh, and a new life uh, and a new power the life that I now live the apostle Paul says I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me Amen. an ascending master a waiting disciple a descending power you see not all the people who walked and worked with the Lord Jesus Christ got the power of God on the day of Pentecost. For one thing, there were only 120 in the upper room. For another thing, there were over 500 who saw him when he was caught up from the Mount of Olives. You read it in the book of Corinthians. Something else to think about is when Jesus said, Will ye also go away? Because so many had turned aside from the truth. When his message got tough, where he said, Except ye eat my flesh uh, and drink my blood, ye have no life in you. Many of them said, This is a hard saying. And they turned away backward and walked no more with him. But the people who stuck with the message uh, and with the messenger, they received the power on the day of Pentecost. Uh, and I tell you, their names will be in heaven's hall of fame. Will you say amen? amen. Now, whilst it is true, he shut his ears to the vain debatings of the sons of the prophets... 
And whilst it is true that he was of the Spirit that said, I will not leave thee, as I so liveth, I will not turn aside from thee, there is something else I want us to see. And it is the three places that they visited before Elisha got the mantle of power. One of them was Bethel. The other one was Jericho. And the other one was Jordan. When they got over Jordan, it was then he got the power. Now, Bethel. When I say Bethel, what do you immediately think of? I will tell you what I think of. Bethel was the place where Jacob started his journey and he dreamed a dream. And in the dream he saw a ladder that reached from earth to heaven. And he saw the angels of God ascending and descending on the ladder. And he called the place Bethel, which is the house of God. The house of God. But later on, if you study about Bethel, you find that Bethel had something added to the name. It became El Bethel. When Jacob went back, he changed the name to El Bethel because when he started off, he started off with a revelation that said, this is the house of God and the very gate of heaven. But when he came back, he discovered the God of the house of God. So that he called it El Bethel, the same as you say El Shaddai, the Almighty, or Elohim, the, the Lord, Jehovah. So that Bethel became El Bethel. But in the experience of Elisha, he went to Bethel. It is necessary for us to come to the house of God. It is necessary for us to come together. My heart was glad when they said, let us go on to the house of the Lord. Do you feel good when you're on your way to church? Yes. Is your heart quickened when you step inside the doors and you see God's people? Yes. My, bless your heart, even when I come in the door and I see the backs of people's heads, I am happy. And I am double happy when I come to the platform and I look out and see their faces. I love God and I love the people of God. Amen. But they left Bethel and they went on to Jericho. What do you think of when you say Jericho? There are a number of things. One, Jericho was the place where the children of Israel had to obey to the letter, the command of the Lord. For when they came up to take Jericho, God said, you shall march around the city for so many days and don't make a sound. But when you come to the seventh day, then you shall encompass it about seven times. And as you come up to the seventh time, then the priest shall blow with a trumpet and the people shall shout with a great shout and the Lord will deliver into your hand the city. And so the children of Israel marched around Jericho, and the inhabitants of Jericho looked out and thought that the religion of the Hebrews had made them crazy. Perhaps the people inside the walls thought, do these people think they are going to scare us by marching about? But something happened when they encompassed the walls for the last time and they shouted with a great shout, the walls of Jericho fell down flatter. Jericho was a place of obedience. 
I think of obedience. Uh, there are plenty of people who come to the house of God, but they never progress to the place of obedience. They still live their own lives. They still do their own thing. Uh, they still live independent of everything. My friends, we are part of each other. In the church of God, we need each other. The body is nourished by that which every joint supplieth. It is bad for a person to be alone, for when they fall, there is none to lift them up. Uh, we need to sustain one another, for the body is nourished by that which every joint supplieth. I am sure there have been times... Uh, when you have not known what way to turn or what to do, uh, but because there was a brother or a sister in the right place at the right time with the word in season, you were able to pass through the trial and get over the problem and arise up uh, in victory. My friends, we need each other. We need to minister to one another. We need to edify one another. We need to build each other up in the most holy faith. Uh, the people need the preacher, and the preacher needs the people. We need each other. And if we are ever to reach the heights in God, it will be because we recognize that we are bone of each other. We are flesh of each other. We are members of each other. And we are marching on in the name of the Lord as an army with banners. Will you say amen? <laughs> Jericho is also a place of fragrance. For Jericho has a sub tropical climate and I was much impressed when we were near to there in the Holy Land because there is a fragrance there is a growth there is prolific growth around because of the balanced climate and temperature a place of obedience and a place of fragrance there's all of sweetness when we are obedient to the Lord isn't that right it is when we are disobedient that, that there's something obnoxious happens. But when we are obedient, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. When King Saul lost his obedience, uh, when he failed to obey to the letter, the word of God, his life began to stink. Come on, I'm saying it plainly. His life began to stink uh, because he thought to kill David. Uh, he, he thought uh, in terms of jealousy and envy and strife. Uh, my friends, the sweetest Christian can become the most stinking thing uh, when we lose our obedience. I pray that God will help us each one to be obedient uh, to the heavenly calling. Paul said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly calling. And if you look at Christians who turn against the message uh, and turn away from the word of the Lord. What are they? They're like the smell of a lamp or the oil has gone done uh, and the wick of the lamp is burning. Have you ever smelt it? It's stinking. Isn't it? Have you ever been in a confined space when a lamp has burned out in a hut or a home in the country? Have you? I have many a time, and it is stinking. You get the doors open and the windows open, and you move them to get the place cleared out. Isn't that right? Well, Christians are no different. When they lose the oil of the Holy Spirit, uh, then they begin to stink. Uh, they begin to stink. Uh, and you know, you've got to be obedient if you want to have the power of God. For the Word of God says that the Holy Ghost is given to them that obey God. I want the Spirit upon me every night and every day. I want the illumination of the Holy Ghost. I want the leading and the guiding of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I want to love Him and I want to serve Him. I want to love, honor, and cherish Him all the days of my life. If that is your desire toward the Lord Jesus... Will you say amen or praise the Lord or something? <laughs> but they didn't stop at Jericho. They went on to Jordan. Now Jordan speaks of death. They went down into Jordan. It was at Jordan that John the Baptist baptized. It was at Jordan that people were trying to put off the old life and put on the new. Wherefore know this, if we are buried with him in baptism, we are also raised in newness of life 
with him. If we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. Elisha wanted the power. He had faithfully served Elijah. He had held the bowl to let Elijah wash his hands. He had bathed the feet of Elijah. He had waited on him hand and foot. And for years he had followed him to learn the tricks of the trade. To learn how to be a man of God. To learn how to perform miracles in the name of the Lord. He had to learn how to discern uh, that when the enemy is all around you, you can look up uh, because more are they that be for you than they that be against you. He had to learn all that. He had to be willing to go beyond the mere congregation of people at the house of God and go on to the place of sweetness, fragrance and obedience. Uh, he had to be willing to go beyond that sweet, nice Christian and get on to that place of death where he was willing to be crucified, where he was willing to die. My friends, uh, when you are willing to die, you begin to learn how to live. He was about to break through into a power that he hadn't handled before. He was about to take on a mantle that he had never worn before. He was about to fulfill a ministry that he had never touched before. He was about to launch into his life's work. And in order to do it, he had to go to Bethel. He had to leave Bethel and go to Jericho. He had to leave Jericho and go to Jordan. He had to go into death that he might rise in newness of life. Glory be to God. My friends, it's no different for us if we want to wear the crown we've got to bear the cross. We have got to go all the way with the master. No half-hearted approach to our religion. We've got to be all out for God. Take my feet. Let them walk in thy footsteps. Take my hands. Let them move with thy love. Take my lips. Let them speak of thy coming. Lead me onward to heaven above. All oh, friends, we are soon to come to the table of the Lord. The best way to approach the supper service, the best way to come to break bread and drink wine and remember the Lord's death is to be willing to die with him. You know what Jesus said? He said, whosoever saveth his life the same shall lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall find it. He shall save it. When when the master hung on the cross at Calvary's rugged tree, they spoke saying, he saved others. Himself he cannot save. We've got to go all the way for God. It means sometimes not getting your own back. It means sometimes not giving as good as you get. It means sometimes not having your own way. It means dying to live. Dying to live. It means becoming a love slave for the master. It means losing your life for Christ and the gospel. But it means finding it. A new joy, a new peace a new power. Amen. God help us, I pray, to go all the way with the Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes.